for the classic poetry of the previous five centuries and all that they have taught us in the creation of what we now call modern poetry. I think the best American poets absorb the past. I don't think they are belligerent in terms of rejecting anything that's not American. Uh, I think that in a way, uh, they continue a tradition of an English uh, literature through American poetry. Um, some vehement American modernists may say no, but I think there's not a good American poet who doesn't uh, acknowledge. You can't, as a poet, not acknowledge your predecessors who have been great examples. You know, I don't think the American be so suicidal and instinctually, um, you know, belligerent and revolutionary that it rejects the past. I don't think so. Any more than any immigrant would reject his ancestors, I don't think. Right. How would you reinvent modern American poetry to better serve the man? <laughs> <laughs> poetry's job to serve humanity. I don't think it's the job of a poet to serve humanity. The job of a poet is to write poetry. And if that poetry has to do with patriotism, well, that's the subject of what you're writing. But you can have a very, as a matter of fact, most patriotic poems are by nature bad. <laughs> <laughs> they exclude another aspect, they exclude some other aspect of humanity apart from me. So if it's all noir and my nation, then it doesn't work. Your selected poems are edited by Edward Bow. Who is Edward Bow? How did he edit? Do you have a personal story about him? I'll tell him. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie Bow is a good poet from Jamaica, who is also a scholar and a professor um, and the orator at the University of the West Indies. And I have worked with him for a long time. Um, and I didn't have the will or the strength or effort to edit my own selection because I didn't know what I would leave out of. And he did leave out a couple of things that I now regret that he did. <laughs> um, but he had to make a selection and he had, I had written long poems and it was difficult for him to make selections from say three or four books that are long poems and to condense it into a selected poems. So <clears throat> the selected poems as a representation in terms of scale of the output is very small. Did, uh, did he choose the poems from uh, Omeris or the sections of the poems from Omeris? Yeah, well, I let, him, I let him be the reader and make his own selection of what he did. <coughs> um, I approved of them eventually, but I did go to help him in the process of selecting. I wanted an editor who was his own editor not one over whose shoulders I have it. How long, uh, Mr. Walcott, did it take to write on that? And it said, and it says, <laughs> Joseph Brodsky offered me, you know, 
doing a lot of work. Um, but I very rarely show other people my work. So in terms of editing, yes, I, I edit myself. Um, I don't know why I don't need or feel that I don't need anyone prior to the process of actually publishing. I have good, no, that's not quite true. I've had very good editors. One of the best editors I've had was Robert Chirou, who edited me in this way and brought a book into him. He read it and he said, it's good, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I've had terrific copy editors <laughs> who helped me a lot. And known people who are not credited in, in the books, but who are, a copy editor is a terrific person. They should be killed. They are relentless. <laughs> They'll just stay there and not move until you change the comma. <laughs> a good one. Or what Pat Straw used to say, she was a beautiful woman, physically looking at her, and she would just scratch her head and wrinkle her face and say, I don't get it. <laughs> Which means it was too obscure for what I was trying to say, you know. She lied, of course, she got it, but she just said, I don't get it. <laughs> so I've had good copy editors, yeah. hmm. not editors as such. This next question, I think, had to do with uh, the reading of your last poem. Do you keep that same mustache or shave and regrow it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> How long have you had that mustache? How often do you trim shave? <laughs> So I do a lot of storyboards, very detailed color storyboards if I'm working on a script, uh, because they help me to know exactly what it is I want. <laughs> Even in terms of, not only in terms of grouping, but in terms of light often. Um, so yes, they're very useful. I don't know much about that in poems, so though. I don't know if you can draw a poem, really. You know. By the time you do the metaphor, the next one is coming. So hard to fix uh, the stillness about a poem in terms of its own. Um, there have been painters who have illustrated their work, like Rossetti has illustrated his own painting. Blake, of course, is a both an engraver and an illustrator of his own work. But apart from that, um, it's not a, I don't think the two go hand in hand, like the immediate representation of what you want to say. As to which is better, um, there's no need to make the comparison either, I don't think. Well, what about music? Sometimes people like to say that, that writing is, is music, and other poets have said, other writers have said that they're in, uh, they just, it's not the same thing. Um, they're very much close to the same thing. 